Um, but no, it's cool to have everyone here. We'll start right on time at 9 a.m. sharp. So thanks for everyone for being here. Um, it's cool to see some old faces and new faces. Um, but yeah, this is this is a really cool place to um, really connect with other entrepreneurs doing cool things. So if you haven't already or had been in Willow Million Cups before, this is a community of um, other entrepreneurs who are doing doing new things and would like some feedback on some stuff or to um, really just connect with other, other people, get inspired by new ideas. Um, so if you haven't already, definitely check in on the app where you can get notified of the new people coming in as well as follow us up, follow us on social media um, we are on instagram facebook and linkedin and meetup um, or just mark your calendar and set that calendar invite that would be great um, so again as i was mentioning this is a community to share ideas to offer help to ask for help to build community and to support each other all while getting really caffeinated uh, on coffee. The differentiators is that this is a place to present, not pitch. This is a place to connect, not necessarily network. Um, and it's for the community, by the community. Um, so we're, we're radically and intentionally inclusive from all different uh, types of entrepreneurs as well. Um, in the One Million Cups Nation, we have about 168 communities, 3,500 uh, attendees, and 700 volunteers uh, putting on this free event every Wednesday morning. So it's cool to think that this is happening across America. Um, and we have had almost more than 8,000 entrepreneurs now, even more now, uh, this number might be out of date, but presenting here at One Million Cup. So this is us at The Collective in South Lake Union, um, which I miss so much, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get back into person eventually. The cool thing now though, is that we get people from other parts of the country to, do, uh, to join these virtual calls. So glad to have everyone here. Um, special thanks to Seattle Strong and A Small Studio for sponsoring us, uh, our meetup and the free coffee that we get uh, in our in-person meetups. We, we can't send out any coffee remotely right now, so I apologize for that. But um, this is our volunteers who help put this event together every week. Um, if you are interested to also becoming a volunteer, we definitely have no shortage of things to do. So, um, you know, if you're here wanting to practice any business skills or social media or, or just event organization in general, definitely reach out to one of us. Um, like with what this slide was supposed to be about. So email us at seattle at onemillioncups.com. Uh, and what to expect today is a six minute presentation from one of our entrepreneurs and uh, 20 minute Q&A. Um, so in the Q&A, definitely ask questions to help the entrepreneur get even more clear on their idea. Um, just be able to provide feedback on, on where they're going or um, what they might need help with as well as uh, any, you know, feedback on their presentation as well. Um, and if you do have a comment or a question, you can use the Zoom features here in the Participants tab and, and hit, click the Raise Hand button there and we'll, we'll call you to, to jump in. So with that, uh, let's have the presenter come in. Uh, a good friend, Ryan, and his sister, Kelly, to present their business, the, the Pursuit and Tie. Um, I've had the privilege to be able to, to know this guy for, <laughs> for a, a long time now. We previously worked at Accenture. Um, and funny enough, we were like tasked to, to decorate the decorations for our like annual party 
and we're like, what is tool? I don't you did a terrible know. job. It was, it was, uh, <laughs> by all standards, just awful work. Yeah, no, it was rough. Uh, but we made it. We are here now. So, uh, welcome to Women in Cups. Awesome. Thank you guys. Um, really appreciate everybody being here. Um, thank you so much for the time today. I'm going to go ahead and start the timer here. Um, I'm Ryan Shirley, and I'm joined um, by my sister Kelly and our wonderful intern Sophia, and we're the Pursuit and Tie team, and we're here to share a little bit about what we do and how we do it, and would welcome any and all insights and feedback afterwards. Thanks again for being here. So real quick story, um, should be familiar for most of you here, right? You've been, or with somebody in your life, you've been recently laid off due to COVID. So you realize you have to dust off the old resume and get that going. Uh, it's been a, several years since you've had to do it. Obviously, this was unexpected. So you go and you do a casual Google search for resume help, which yields a very casual uh, 1.3 billion results <laughs> um, on different ways to help you improve your resume. This is across asset or, uh, areas like vendors, blogs, newsletters, lists, articles, listicles, whatever, what have you. There's millions of resources out there and it's almost a problem of oversaturation. So the questions come to mind, right? How can I start? Who can I trust with this information? How can I sift through it all and aggregate it or distill it down into something that's actionable and impactful that I can do quickly? So these are the kind of stories we find ourselves in all the time. And unfortunately, even now, you know, now more than ever with everything going on. Good. So what is our main goal of Pursuit and Ties to help with these stories, right? We find ourselves in these conversations a lot. We want to help tell your story. We believe that everybody has something valuable and impactful to bring to their employer, to bring forward in their narrative as a professional. And so we try and work one-on-one -on -one with clients um, to go and address each aspect of their professional portfolio, right? And make sure that we're extracting value and imparting value and sharing value as a resource rather than just function, which has been the tried and true method of resumes for you know the last several years is, is more writing about what you did that was awesome versus writing about what you did. So we got started because of this oversaturation, right? We found a lot of information that was useless, both in colleges um, and outside of colleges. Uh, there's just not a ton of professional development out there. It's gotten a lot more saturated since we started five years ago, um, but that's what our mission is, right? We, three words, dynamic, proven and affordable workshops to try and try and bring, bring quick value to folks who need a storyteller, just need to feel confident in what they've been able to do with their careers. So that's me. Um, Again, lack of hygiene on full display in this photo. Um, from Georgia, born and raised in Georgia, I've only lived in Seattle for three years, but I got to start as a technical recruiter, and that really made me interested in the storytelling aspect of resumes. Started doing it for free for my fraternity buddies. Kelly was like, hey, you know, we could probably make some money at this. So that's how we got started. Kelly? Hi, everyone. I'm Kelly, and I'm the one that lives in Atlanta. Um, I actually just recently got married the weekend before quarantine, so my name just changed. Thankfully, we're quarantined in a one-bedroom apartment. It's going really well. Um, but I graduated two years after Ryan and I went into an automotive marketing job. Didn't find the nine-to-five to be my kind of lifestyle, so kind of dab into a bunch of different things, real estate, event planning, and now I'm a full-time entrepreneur. And so aside from Pursuit and Tie, I do my own um, nutritional consulting. I'm a certified personal trainer and health coach, and I do nutrition. So eventually, Ryan and I's goal is to really kind of merge Pursuit and Tie and my brand, Health and Kellness, together to kind of provide personal and professional growth for anyone that we encounter. So we've had a kind of an overlap with clients um, in that sense, and it's been really rewarding. So I still live in Atlanta and um, just love meeting new people. So it's awesome meeting all of you. So we have several offerings here. Um, our first two, our top two, continue to be resume and cover letter and the others exist, but we uh, sell far more of the first two offerings. Kelly, can keep moving. Uh, yeah. So we also have national Greek partnerships where we've established ourselves as partnering with uh, fraternity organizations for members and alumni, where we create assets for them customized to their mission as well as go on site and deliver at their conventions and be a consistent part of their member development. Our workshop approach is pretty simple. We conduct a free review with the freemium model, right? You get this little pop-up on our website, go in, hit you with some tips for 30 minutes. And if you wanna keep using us, we deep dive into your experience, gather more of your requirements, assess your value. I pull it out of you like a game of operation. And then we go and construct that new resume. We validate that you love it and we send you off and cheer, cheer you on. We're unique because we have personal engagements across all the different phases of these workshops. We have 
offerings to fit every cost model from cheap eBooks to help do it yourself to us engaging you full time. We have flexibility and tons of revisions available. We're not a bloated firm with a hard and fast SLA around how often or how much we'll go out of the way to help you. We continue to iterate and evolve our offerings based on conversations with hiring managers and recruiters. We are you know, strong in interviewing folks on social media and we continue to educate ourselves about the best practices in this evolving art form. So some of the opportunities ahead, right? And you know, love everybody's feedback as other entrepreneurs here. We continue to struggle to market effectively, right? Um, our audiences are so broad, it's hard to really pinpoint those personas. Granted, we have a ton of clients that fit the same categories, but still it's a wide net, especially nowadays. So it's difficult to really hit that and bring in the best folks. Um, we continue to you know, have opportunities with Greek life. Um, we see that this is gonna change with them needing members now more than ever and offering something other than a test bank that may have been cool in the 70s, but now members actually wanna get something out of these organizations. So we've gotta have a tight focus on storytelling since COVID, and we wanna make sure to integrate new offerings like health and wellness into our broader book of business, as well as providing personal and professional development. One last thing, this is the kind of stuff we envision in the future, curriculum for a student across all four years of college to help them get out and land a great job. And I think I'm at six minutes right there. Kel, next slide. Those are our asks of you guys, if you can. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure sharing this for six minutes and I really welcome your questions and insights and as we continue to scale our business. Thank you. All right. Like yeah, it really does. Thanks for thanks for keeping it under six minutes. I appreciate the. Well, I you know I had to, I had to you know I had Victor's reputation on the line here. I, yeah. <laughs> it's been dry running it since one a.m. You know, didn't sleep, didn't eat. Um, so no, I it uh, it does go by quick. So I hope that was relevant for you guys Plus, and gave you a, a good overview of what we're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, thanks for coming on. And, and uh, I mean, I, I have some questions, but let's open it up to other people as sure. well. So Katie? Yeah, um, well, congrats. You packed a lot into those six minutes. Um, I feel like it was a really strong presentation. You got a clear sense of who you are, what, uh, both as people and also as like what your brand does and tries to accomplish and how it's different. Um, so that's really awesome. My, one of my questions is around, uh, the piece that you mentioned about it being an opportunity would be trying to figure out like who, you didn't necessarily say this, but it sounded like you had some questions around who your ideal client is. Um, and I'm curious, like, how are you finding, you know, customers now you kind of, it sounded like I was hearing something around, like we've had some not like ideal clients and then some not so ideal clients like can you talk a little bit more about who you serve sure um so yeah great question and thank you for the feedback i appreciate it um so we have we started this thinking we would be really doubling down on the co recent college graduate um that you know obviously they're and are helping them out but like have they really applied this to the real world does their experience in college map to something that employers care about so that's where we felt the big right that's the biggest gap we thought we could fill a couple you know years so in we realized that our business is ultimately predicated on a sense of humility right that these clients have to come to us saying i need some extra eyes on this i may not have all the answers i'm not sure if you're familiar with college students but that's not exactly a word i would use to describe a recent graduate oftentimes so we kind of had to pivot a little bit there to cast a wider net outside of just warm leads within a college ecosystem because kelly and i both were active in our school and things like that to where now we serve folks that are either in that category. We have a lot of folks that are in the, I haven't updated my resume in eight years category, right? And then we have a lot of folks that are, you know, very seasoned in their careers, looking for a way to get anything going because they're always considered overqualified for work or have a 90 page resume dating back to their first job in, you know, 82. So we have, you know, I, I would put those three buckets as kind of the three people we continue to get leads from. And the way we actually go about marketing and Kelly can share a little more here is we've been, you know, we hit all the main socials, right? We try and be very active um, and engaging on those. Sophia's done a great job of presenting, you know, a little strategy around that before we were kind of haphazard. Um, but Kelly and I, you know, actively market a lot of, on Facebook groups. So in the Seattle Facebook groups where people post that they need reviews, we comment on them. We get some leads from Reddit on those communities. Um, so it takes, you know, it's manual. It's not all as automated or as off, uh, you know, as easy as we'd like, but that's, that's part of the, 
the opportunity is to continue to, to find more um, groups like those where people are posting that they need help. Does that answer your question? Yeah, totally. Um, do you find, just a follow up, do, like it sounds like you're in a lot of different places. Do you find like that that's uh, a really heavy lift? Like would focus help you guys? Yeah, so that's a great point too. And that's one thing we're working on as a team is trying to actually give ourselves a lot more enablement in these conversations. Because sometimes it feels like we're starting from, you know, you are starting from scratch with every client for the obvious reason that this is a person's story and their particular livelihood so far. Um, but what we've been able to do is kind of start to create knowledge bases for ourselves to where we're able to say, okay, if you have this job, we have 50 resumes in that in, in our knowledge base that I can pull from and make the process as easy as possible for them and for me to pull from fodder that we already have so I don't have to reinvent the wheel. Because I already work in consulting full time and I know redundancy uh, when I see it. So we try and be nimble in that sense um, and make it as easy on ourselves as possible to provide value. Nice, that's awesome. That great questions. Kel, did I miss anything there? No, I mean, I'll be the first to say that we've been very organic from the beginning. I think Ryan and I, you know, we both work other jobs, but we love this for the sake that it brings him and I together. And then also we're just helping people at the end of the day. So, you know, if we had really, if we really hone in on more um, marketing for the sake of, you know, paid ads and things like that, I really think we have more success, which is really our next step. I think the biggest thing with Ryan and I is we kind of launched this thing and then we've changed and changed and changed ever since. And I think that's honestly been better in our way because we've been really able to reevaluate, you know, add Sophia on, she does the social media and we're even just trying to figure out those niches even more niche, whatever, however you say that, um, so that we can, you know, target more effectively when we do pay for those ads. I think for me, when we jumped into being this, I was like, I don't want to just throw money around and not have any result. That's just dumb. So I really thought, want to that too, that, like, we could go to a college and say, Hey, we can complement your career center that you have at college. Can we help serve as extra hands, extra eyes? Not a ton of appetite for that. Um, you know, you're dealing with folks that are in that space academically for many years, lots of studies that have gone into that, lots of degrees. Um, and so we found ourselves hit with that kind of like, you know, back off. We, we've been doing this for 50 years and, you know, we don't need, okay, all right. I've seen some of the resumes you guys have turned around though. They're not super great. Um, but anyway, so, <laughs> but anyway, so we kind of, again, to Kelly's point, th this is a, as, as fluid as the, the thing we're selling is we have to be right. And this, this changes often. So we have to adapt. All right, Leif. That's me. I muted myself the first try too. Um, well, uh, Ryan Kelly, uh, Sophia, a really interesting presentation you have. Uh, like everyone said, ton of great information in six minutes without being overwhelming. So maybe presentation stuff is on your uh, radar next for helping people with. <laughs> um, so what comes to mind for me is that my understanding of the job market as someone who hasn't looked for a job recently um, is that it's not so resume focused. It's a lot more connections focused and knowing people that work at a company you already want to work at and then just getting them out for lunch or talking to them. What's kind of your response, your company's response to that notion? Nobody can discount the value of networking, right? The, the cliche or the adage is true. It is your net worth, right? Certainly able to help. I mean, I know as somebody who's applied cold to Amazon versus applying with an inside reference, um, that process is exponentially easier when you have that referral. But with that said, and I think it's a big but, is the, the, the thing we find more often than not is people lean really heavily on that and not enough on actually creating a crisp story for themselves. And then they find themselves in conversations at the, high, at the interview level, um, at the whiteboarding level where they're caught off guard. And you know, that's what we try and do is create this proactive storytelling so that when people become more confident in what they've done, it rolls off the tongue a lot easier, right? When you have a rote resume that you're not very excited about, I don't care who you know, if you can't articulate your value in a way that's impactful, it's very difficult to get somebody to buy into you, regardless of how well they know you. So Kelly and I really double down on that storytelling piece because it really comes to light, not so much in the resume phase, but in the interview phase. When you're excited about your resume and you see the stories you've done, that's when you're able to communicate those. And my boss in my other job is big on anecdotes, right? Sell anecdotes, right? Not narrative, like quick value nuggets, elevator pitches. You're on the plane before the guy next to you puts his headphones in. What are you going to say about yourself? That kind of mentality is what we bring to the storytelling aspect of the resume. So completely agree with you on the networking side, but I really do think you have to have a compliment that's at least 
enough to be dangerous or you're going to find yourself in some tough interviews. Wow. That's why you typically encourage like people to do the resume and then the cover letter in the LinkedIn kind of as a package because you kind of get more confident as you go and the LinkedIn gives you that access to network and feel comfortable about the story you've already created. So we kind of give those skills throughout the process and then we also offer like mock interviews kind of things so we can kind of get to know that person's personality and help them take their story to the next level in that sense. Too. And, it's, and it's interesting too, right? Cause it's like the resume is a page or a page and a half at the most, right? Especially now you've got like six seconds before they move on. So the impact level is high. Our mantra is bring the sexy stuff to the front, right? Like what does a hiring manager care about? Give them what's sexy. You know, if your most relevant experience was originally on page two, shuffle that deck of cards to where that's at the top, right? Like bring them the relevance. Don't worry so much about the, the tried and true things in resume, like you have to go in chronological order, you have to have three bullets of thing. It's all fluid. It can be what you want it to be. So like, you know, you have that aspect, then you have the cover letter aspect, which is how is my value relevant to you? Why should you care as a hiring manager, right? So they're distinctly different assets, but equally important and you have to be cohesive. Um, and oftentimes you have a strong resume and a terrible cover letter or vice versa. And then you have a LinkedIn with the weird gray avatar that they haven't updated since they were in college. And so, you know, it really, it does have to be homogenous. They're going to click on it, you know, so it's got to, the storytelling has to be succinct and it has to be across those assets. Very good answer. Um, that's kind of what I was hoping to hear. And I think that you, you've apparently worked on your own storytelling with this too, and it really shows and the anecdotes and it's all very, uh, it feels like a very correct, modern approach to hiring and getting to know people. So awesome. Phenomenal. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thanks. Jonathan. Thank you. I was curious how you all um, work with folks to create their resume in a way that's going to be picked up through the ATS, the applicant tracking system. So is that something that you already use? Is that something that you're moving towards? I was just kind of curious about that. No, great stuff. So um, we started with a heavy focus on the ATS just because it was the buzzword at the time, right? And like it's grown more ubiquitous as we've moved on. So we certainly understand that, you know, you have to get it through the algorithm, right? There is a screening element to this that's automated before a person even sees it. So we appreciate that and know that it's a concrete part of the process. However, what we find is that when people come to us concerned about the ATS, they typically haven't even customized the resume to the job description itself. Which is like the number one step you have to take these days is what I suggest for all folks is pull up five job descriptions for the same position. So for sales manager, pull up five companies that are hiring and distill those job descriptions down to three themes they want you to bring on day one. Because what's a job description other than a wish list, right? Sure, ask for an MBA. Sure, ask that they have international experience. Sure, ask that they solve world hunger twice. Like why not see what comes back in the in the job in the applications. So what we try and do is say, guys, you have got to distill down the job descriptions you're looking at into the themes they want you to bring value in day one and make sure that those are profoundly resonant in a tactful way in your resume. Um, and we find that typically, because I actually did an experiment, I did like just shop for shop, replaced words with synonyms on the job description to try and get through the ATS versus did what I suggested there with the cover letter. And my applications moved through four X's quickly with that approach that we impart versus the one where we just are prescriptive with putting in buzzwords. And I mean, you get some really, you get some resumes that are like, they have no form or function around how they do it at all. Like a list of keywords and times new Roman at the bottom, you know, separated by commas, nothing, nothing says customization effort and panache like that. Right. So you, there is, the, you have to be, ta you have to be like dexterous in the way you do it. You can't just dump all the words from the job description into your experience. It has to be impactful. And what we've seen is that people really do notice that. Um, our clients that come back to us and say, like, the way you helped tailor the resume got the recruiter's eye because it was done the right way. And they get a lot of stuff that's just blah, without any kind of rhythm to it. So certainly appreciate the ATS, but we found, again, it comes back to compelling storytelling. Jolene? So I actually, I have two questions. I'm curious, what has the biggest change been in the last five years that you have seen? Um, and then... The second question is, is that what, what um, is funneling the most, uh, the most customers to you right now? What's sure. working the best? Yeah. Um, is there one specific social or is it word of mouth or, you know, what, what is working for you the best? Sure. Uh, I'll take the first one and Kelly can jump in on the second one. So biggest change I've seen in five years, unsurprisingly, 
the ubiquitous nature of technology, right? And the, the um, importance that hiring managers put on the fact that they're not gonna have to teach you tools you should already know, right? So like before 10 years ago, like people put Microsoft Office as a skill. Don't put that on the resume anymore. That simply tells me that you do in fact have a pulse. Like that's not a value add, right? Like I'm expecting that you come to the work, come to work knowing Word and not Word 98, Word, you know, the, the new one. So like that's that's the first thing we notice is that we recommend our, our clients put right underneath their objective statement, they put their technology toolkit, right? Like what are the tools you employ to get your job done currently? And even give themselves a score out of 10 on that tool. For example, like I'm an eight out of 10 in Salesforce, I'm a seven out of 10 in HubSpot. So that right away the hiring manager has some context, right? Because people want specialists, they don't want generalists. So again, setting the table for the hiring manager before you get into the narrative is a huge part of that. And technology has unequivocally just become more common in that exercise, right? So listing that toolkit out, giving yourself those self reviews, again, gives them a quick view of, okay, I'm not gonna need to train so-and-so on this tool. It looks like they're enough to be dangerous. Let me keep reading. Instead of where they have to hunt for that information, there's no time for a hiring manager to look for stuff on your behalf, right? You've got to give it to them or they're going to move on. So it's context and it's technology. And Kel, about what's worked? Um, I would say, first and foremost, we've had a lot of success with just referrals. And thankfully, the clients that we've had have referred lots of other people with us, with them. So, you know, just word of mouth in general. And then Ryan and I have worked career fairs. Um, we did the fraternity uh, convention last year. So when we have a table and Ryan and I are physically in person and people can really understand what we do, that really helps to uh, bring in a lot of leads and business that way. And then as we kind of mentioned, Facebook, which surprisingly was more successful than I was thinking. Um, Instagram has been a little bit, but we've been kind of defining our um, niche there as well. And then our messaging. And I think Ryan and I kind of went into this whole business, you know, with the, with the knowledge that like, we don't want to give away too much information because then people are not going to want to use us at, at the end. But realistically, like him and I are becoming, are becoming more involved in the community and getting more people on the, on our page and showing other people's opinions. And that I think will resonate long-term versus him and I just doing quick pop-up videos because it's more about the community and network and, you know, showing other people's struggles and um, success stories than just us. So we're kind of, you know, through COVID, we've had definitely an uphill with that, but um, we're looking to definitely grow more. And I've recently launched events in Atlanta, which my goal is to bring professional and personal growth to the community through uh, workouts and vendors and all this kind of stuff. So I'm hoping to kind of bring more uh, networking for us in that case as well. Because a lot of the times social media, you know, people just think we might be a resume service or also, it's tough because you, it's kind of a one-time thing. You come to us once and then you're like, okay, I'm good. I don't need to keep up with you necessarily. So I think we're finding that balance of how can we keep people engaged, not just for the sake that they need a resume done, but how can we keep them involved for long-term success and just growth in general. So yeah, we want them to like follow our page because there's valuable content, regardless of whether you've used this in the past. Like, you know, Kelly and I would start doing these tie tips, we call them, and we would just do tie tips a couple times a week sharing a couple good nuggets. Here's something I learned, you know, it's okay to ask how to pronounce somebody's name, like little professional things that like just that have helped us get, you know, get you through the day. Um, but, you know, believe it or not, there's only so many of those you can do before you feel like a broken record. Like I can't talk about value and function anymore on social media or I'll explode. So we had to kind of pivot to like, how can we bring in successful professionals and tell us what good looks like for you? Like, what if I want to be you? How do I get there? So we've done Instagram live has been a really cool forum for that. Cause like Victor did one with me and uh, we both, you know, commiserated as entrepreneurs sharing a little bit about what he does, what I do, what good looks like for him, the future looks like for him, et cetera, pivoting with COVID. So like, that's a reason to get a follower back, right? Is because it's not us talking about ourselves. It's us as a community for people to tell us what they love about their job and what, how they got there. So I actually had a, I don't, uh, when we first started, I would go around on the street and ask people their biggest um, embarrassing interview. Weirdly, nobody wanted to participate. So I don't recommend the gorilla ambush method as much, um, but when it's, when you have buy-in, it works pretty well. And I think a lot of that too has just come from us not really, we, we started out initially, you know, wanting to accept anyone and everyone. And I was like, we're going to be millionaires in a month. Like I had this huge. The Kelly has a very realistic <laughs> expectation. <laughs> very uh, goal driven but anyway so it's kind of like been a process just finding out who exactly we are and what our goals are and so now we're really on basically like we're built we're good and we feel like thankfully from all of your feedback it's very you know satisfying just to hear that we're on a good trajectory and then we're basically ready to we're ready to go now so that's my thought on that 
Yeah. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to, yeah, I'm just going to jump in because I can't raise my hand actually as I was, but based on that topic, right? I think, you know, in terms of, um, so I know that, I know Ryan, for example, wants to go full time into this. This is your passion. This is the one you actually want to be spending your time in outside of your job. And I wonder what is the kind of the, 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 almost big messy problem or block for you um, for or either of you to you know take this to that next level to scale this so that you can go full time uh, great great stuff i think i think really and like it's not a sexy niche at all but hitting the greek life partnerships is a market that nobody cared about that i wouldn't have even thought about unless somebody brought it up saying look organizations that are greek at schools have budgets set aside for member development why don't you guys attack that budget and I'd never thought of that before. Was, and, and, and like, you know, we've gotten solicited by other fraternities and they're like, you guys are the only vendor that has done that. Like we're the only ones that have done this. So I think we have a real niche there. And that's the kind of thing I think that's the up level. Cause we can, we can pound out individual resumes till the cows come home and that's great. And that's what we love to do is storytelling. But these strategic partnerships would demand like regional allocations of a team, right? Like you'd have a West coast P and T guy supporting the West coast chapters. You have a you know middle states person supporting those folks that's growth right like that's scale for us so we're really chasing those opportunities and we have one right now with an organization that we're you know being down selected to pitch to the ceo like here's what we could offer you in terms of levels of support but again to my point that i alluded to in the deck it's like fraternities and sororities can't just rely on test banks or you know really fun parties anymore or punch punch like college kids you know it's weird they actually demand more from these organizations um than clubs, which, you know, foreign to me. But anyway, I think, you know, that's a great, a great place to be and a great niche to hit. Um, but it's one that, you know, we didn't even think about. And frankly, nobody seems to care about. So I think we have a tiger by the tail there. And that's, that's the biggest challenge is getting that sign on from those folks, because it's a long sales cycle in education. It's a long sales cycle in these organizations, not a ton of budget, some budget, not a ton. So that's, that's where we have to be nimble. And, you know, again, being a two person firm, our costs are pretty, mean. sorry, three, Sophia. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the, add to that too. It's more the other big block on, you know, that to getting those leads and or to getting that kind of thing. We also want to create more, um, you know, through our eBooks, we've got a lot of great eBooks. Ryan and I have taken a lot of time to write that it's 20 bucks. You know, you don't have to spend the whole hour or in multiple uh, meetings with us to get some great results or information, but we want to like, I think for me, I'm just kind of, I'm, needing to find a great digital strategist who can really help me take the marketing to the next level and the paid ad ad avenue. I don't know much about that. Um, And I'm also just somebody who likes to know my my money's being effective. So I just kind of want to, that's kind of really where we're at. We're, We're at the point where we know our brand well enough and we have a great system that it's really just like we want more exposure naturally through that. So I think between that and Greek Life Connections really is where we plan to take things. Yeah. No, oh, that's awesome. That's super cool. So yeah, having that digital strategy in place, because I'm already thinking that, you know, the resources that you create can definitely be reused, you know, nobody like I think people will come in, in many different times of their lives. And, you know, maybe one person might see duplicate content. But, you know, I think that's for you to minimize your overwhelm, you just reuse old ones, right? Or maybe just restructure in a different way. We, we um, don't want clients right like that's a loss for us if yeah. somebody has to come back to us we educated them poorly right like right. not to say that they didn't you know if they loved our work on the ask us for help with a cover letter that's that's an upsell that's a different thing but rather than like we cut you loose we you know we're cheering you on from the bleachers and then six months come back and you're like you know like we we, we want to make sure we're education driven right so that you're you're taught to fish not tethered to us after the deal is done so we want that to ring true as well that's great. And, and I think that actually goes into that personal coaching side. So, you know, how, did, what kinds of plans did you have to currently merge those things? And then second part of that question too, is how do you almost, you know, uh, qualify your current leads or clients into the coaching side of things? The health coaching, the health, yeah. E- either, uh, maybe more question for Kelly, actually. <laughs> Um, I mean, for me, so I, again, with the events, like that's kind of a local thing I'm really trying to build. But beyond that, um, like I would love to, you know, have, if we were at a convention, have a, if, especially on the uh, sorority side, 
you know, have all the girls be able to come to a workout in the morning before they have their whole day of activities. Like, let's get some movement in, let's learn something about health, and then we can go ahead and, you know, move forward with a day of professional growth kind of thing. Um, and then even like online webinars, Ryan and I are t tapping into the webinar field and we have a great free one next week for a resume. We've got 20 people on that. So we're trying to just create more educational things that will end up, I think it goes back to what I was saying earlier. Like we don't want to, giving away too much information at this point really just, I think, doesn't hurt you, you know, just give it away. Those right people will come to you because they're going to need that specific hand on it. But never feeling like we have to hold back what we know and what we're, you know, confident in doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that, the, that too. Yeah, they still need the, they still need the co-author, right? You can give them all the great information. You can give them a template, you know, you can give them everything, but like writing professional writing and writing about yourself is probably one of the hardest asks uh, for folks in the candidacy phase. So that's where mm -hmm. we, for some reason, people feel really good letting somebody else tell you how awesome they are. Um, but it's very difficult to do yourself, um, you know, unless you have a head to mind, obviously. Um, but anyway. Yeah, no, and, and just last comment there, I think that's what really can make you stand out too, is that you do take more of that personal approach to it, where it's not just like, hey, this is all about work and, you know, all these tactics or whatnot, but that you do more of the, the you know, holistic view of things, so. Um, represent the person. You know, like, just... uh, like um, you know, ways to stay healthy during your nine to five, or even right. at home, like how can you take breaks during the day and mental health, you know, all that that's tied into your whole, if you're not happy in your job, you can't really, you know, manage stress. That's going to affect relationships, all this kind of stuff. So Ryan and I not only want you to find a job, but we want you to find the job that you really like and you're happy exactly. in and you thrive. So kind of all comes together. Great. Uh, Ryan, you have a question? Yeah, thanks. Great presentation. Uh, two things. One, can you give us some non-text uh, testimonials. You know, I love the testimonials on your website. They're great, but maybe some before and afters of uh, resumes that you've pimped out or, you know, or, or whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> websites, brands, design, whatever, whatever the story is. Right now it's all text. I love me a good wall of text. I'll write those all day, but there's plenty of other people that are, you know, they're just never going to read it and they would, you know, rather have some like. That's uh, a great, that's a great insight. Yeah. We have been trying to get clients to send us video testimonials so that I can put them on the website which is ideal, um, but we have been struggling to get people to do that. So, uh, you know, I would love, love to have more people's faces and showing their actual, you know, no no need to go into detail about where you're working or whatever, but just more, this experience with PNT was great for these reasons or not, you know, and we want to be able to showcase that. So it's really just been finding people that will be willing to share their stories beyond text. That's, I mean, we could stand to, you know, graphically represent even some of the text stuff a little better. So that's a well-taken point, man. I appreciate that. You had another one too? Yeah. Um, I'm sure you're doing things a little differently now that so many people are working from home due to the coronavirus stuff. Um, is there anything that you can, you know, feature prominently on your website saying that you have pivoted to specifically highlight the sorts of things that are maybe a little more valuable now that people are working from home, just stuff like that? Yeah, no, that's another good point. I mean, again, like, you know, that's something I think we could stand to grow on the, at least right when you get there, right? We talk about bringing the relevant stuff forward and resume writing, you know, I think the same should apply to our website. So yeah, Cal, I think maybe we could create something that's like, you know, coronavirus resources, um, where we, you know, do our webinar recordings, have our templates hosted on there, right? That's, that's great stuff. Um, so certainly we'll take those actions. That's awesome feedback. Awesome, Katie. Hey, uh, sorry, I was in the process of sharing your webinar uh, on LinkedIn. Um, I, I was going to try and share it on Facebook, FYI, but it looks like your Facebook posts come from Instagram. And so it says like link in bio. So then your Facebook posts don't actually have a link for me to share if I wanted to share that FYI. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm, I'm curious about, um, I guess one quick, potentially quick thing is that the brand strikes me as fairly masculine. And so I'm curious if that has been um, indicative of like the kind of customers you end up getting. Uh, whereas I like, I feel like you two seem very approachable to any, uh, any person from our experience of you, but I'm curious if that has been an issue at all. Gosh, that's the, I gotta be honest. That's the first time anybody met, you know, like I, I never really even thought. Really? 
like the pun so much. Yeah, like pursuit and tie, like we, yeah, suit and tie, pursuit and tie. It was all about the pun. Like I never even thought about that. Granted, some people do think we make attire. Uh, we have had, you know, we have had to tell people that we're not Joseph A. Bank or Brooks Brothers. Um, so, but that's a, that's a great point. You know, no, I hadn't thought of that before, but it's never affected our client split. Um, definitely. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even a lot of compliment on the name itself. People think it's super creative and memorable. Like it's not like totally. You were gonna no, do like, never... <laughs> and so you know that was boring. But my friend actually came up with it. She was working with me, and she came in one day, and she was like, "Hey, what about pursuit and tie?" And I hated it. And then we eventually found it to be P and T, and it kind of worked. But the name actually, yeah, it's what people think once they know what we do and understand our mission. Which I think that's the biggest thing is it's not we're not just a hand you a resume kind of people we really have a more deeper thing there and so we need to really that's why we kind of had that video on our website to kind of show our personalities a little bit more hey this is who we are and by the way we're cool on the other side too so and we don't make clothes I, yeah we will not make clothes for you yeah that's <laughs> yeah no and don't get me wrong i love the name but i also came into this not being really sure what yeah. you know what the brand was going to be um yeah. and then hearing you say tie yeah. tips like Okay, so still kind of feels a little bit like we're going in that direction. So just something to keep in mind as you're continuing to move forward. Yeah, it's a good thought. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and really, I mean, talk about something that's rapidly becoming an outdated reference is the tie itself, right? Like we use wearing ties anymore anyway. Uh, so yeah, you know, but you might have to iterate on that as well. But that's, that's a good insight. Jolene. Okay, I actually, I'm with Katie. I, well, two things. I love the name and I actually really, I, I love your, your logo. But when I went to your landing page, I, it felt very um, conservative and, and, and masculine. And I, yeah. and from my standpoint, when I go to a landing page, I, I would want it to reflect where I would want to work. And those pictures are like, I don't, that's not where I want to work. I don't, I don't want to work with that guy who's sitting in his suit and tie and yeah. it, but I may not be your market. And that's one of the reasons why I, I asked a little bit about what your, what your um, biggest funnel is, because I also am, I'm curious, as you talk about the Greek, these kids, they're still kids. And mom and dad are still like heavily involved. They're yes. still calling employers for their kids. They're still, you know, doing these things. And I'm curious if you have thought about marketing to the moms and dads instead of the kids. Mm -hmm. And if that's part of your funnel. And then the other last thing, and I'm sorry, I'm going on, is that um, I totally agree. When you are in a saturated market like you guys are, I think sharing your expertise is essential because I, when I go into, and I struggle with this too because I'm in a saturated market, but I find that when I share the information, I'm showing that I'm the expert. There's tons of people out there saying, I'm the expert, I'm the expert, I'm the expert. But if they don't show me, if they haven't actually proven it to me by sharing information, it's like, yeah, whatever. So I think that you're very much on the right track with sharing good nuggets because then people want it personalized. So I think that that part of it, I, I wouldn't be afraid of sharing your expertise as much as you can because people are, that's how people are going to be like, no, they know it and I want it personalized for me. So I'm sorry, but parents, that's my biggest. Yes. So short answer is yes. We've actually hit parents pretty hard. Both, uh, you know, Sophia, Kelly, and myself all went to the same high school even. Um, and we have kind of annoyed those, those folks. <laughs> well, we have no shame in who we will, we will hit. And we are fully understanding of the, you know, bank of mom and dad um, throughout college. So we, we have marketed ourselves. And again, like, you know, that was kind of the thing too, is we didn't want the landing page to feel too loose because, you know, some, some parents may not buy into that vibe, right? So we're trying to kind of toe the line your points are very well taken. I think we could stand to, to loosen things up a little bit given, um, you know, that we serve such a wide group and our number one lead source is uh, the uh, women's entrepreneurship group in Atlanta via Facebook, like, you know, probably, you know, 60, 40 women to men right now. Um, but like, yeah, so um, I think all that's well taken, but yes, we do market to the parents and that's kind of why we wanted to make sure we had something that made the parents feel comfortable because we have had moms and dads stroke checks for the entire offering, right? Soup to nuts, all the way from resume writing to interview prep 
Um, so, you know, we, we do hit that hard. Um, as far as avenues to get more parental buy-in, um, that's, that's been a challenge or an opportunity for us to grow there is like, how can we effectively hit that audience and not the kids that are so approachable or so prevalent across all these different channels, right? Um, you know, I don't have a ton of folks that have like an Earthlink domain, you know, I'm not really tied into the, you know, the, the boomer squad. So you got to kind of think differently there, but um, that's, that's all well taken stuff and certainly agree about the website. So I, I'm sorry, I'm going to just make one more recommendation then. It's possible for you guys to do a separate landing page for depending on who you market to. And so you may want to think about, you yeah. know, adding that because if you are heavily in this female entrepreneur, I think you could make it look That's more right. female for them. And still, I mean, yeah. the, I still think that the, the, your, your logo and your, and your, um, and your name totally, you can totally use that. But I would switch the landing page just for them. That's a great idea. No, it's certainly. Yeah, it's awesome. Great stuff. This has been everything we would hope for, Victor. <laughs> All right. I'm glad. Uh, last one here, and Andrea. Or Andrea. Hi, it's good to see you again. Um, and I apologize that I joined late. So I think it, so I might be off pitch here. But um, I think it follows nicely with the last two comments. Schools. So I taught for a long time and there are a lot of English teachers that will try to do a cover letter as a writing exercise or business classes that'll do resumes, but how they support students, it's ad hoc. And given that you're already going after the fraternity market, it seems like it could be a really smooth trajectory. And so I don't, if I'm, I, I apologize if I'm off pitch, but I think a um, couple ways to go about that is that teachers, if you're interested to make like a side thing is you could make like a little soup to nuts lesson plan mm. and sell that online for a reasonable like 10 to 20 dollars teachers will download it and they'll pay for it I another way that. yeah huh. another way is um partnering with school districts and as I, you know, I work in the inner cities mostly, and as much as I like support the inner cities, it's really the um, well-to-do suburban schools that would put the money into providing that service for their students. Um, so really networking with the superintendents and pitching that um, would be a huge service that they would love. So just put that out there. And then the other just random thing, connection with the fraternity is I just got an email that my sorority is excited because they um, eliminated, you, you might know this, they eliminated, eliminated the legacy preference in an okay. effort for more diversity. So sure. thinking about like how that could maybe change what the narrative and the story for, for the organization, the people involved. Yeah, that's great. It's about time. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So lots of random things. I love the idea that just because your, your dad or mom was in a group, you, you must be a good person as well. Like that's a hilarious, like apply that to anything outside of Greek or it doesn't make any, it's stupid. Um, so yeah, no, I'm totally with you and glad to hear that. And that's, that's a great thought about toolkits for the teachers, right? To help them deliver something impactful for their students in a way that doesn't require such a cumbersome lesson plan um, that they have to create themselves. Cause my wife teaches fourth grade. So I'm all, all for uh, helping those heroes out. Andrew, do you think it'd be something where we would actually be able to come in and like do the workshop there? Or is it more where they would just continue to download the document? By, like our plan and then they would implement the plan, like, an e on the website and then they would do it. I, I'm going to be honest, the district where I grew up, they are, I call them an Achievatron with the, where they put their money behind the achievement and it's a very driven community. They would pay you to do that. The districts where I teach, they don't, they just don't have the funding for it. But the teachers want that to happen and they put it in their lesson plan. So those are the teachers that would be downloading the resources. Okay. Wow. That's just That's my experience. Great. That's great. Yeah, that was one of the offerings we had with that one fraternity that we positioned to them was like, we can create an essential knowledge base to help guide these students through. We can appoint an individual consultant at a certain point in their college trajectory where then we work with them every year to like, oh, take this internship over that one, or you might want to consider this skill or go get this, you know, go on lynda.com and learn this particular scripting language, what have you. So like, I think proactive enablement for students is becoming more and more important, especially as they're focused.
getting out and having something great ready, uh, whether it's a gig economy or, or not. Yeah, and as you mentioned that, it just struck me, um, grants, so they could actually write you into their grant funding. So if you research 21st century um, grants, like that would be, um, or career technical education, they could actually get, they could use their grant money for you, I imagine. Yeah, no, that's very helpful. Really awesome insights, guys. Thank you so much. Lots of work to do, Kel and Sophia. Awesome. Oh. Oh, go ahead. You're not finished? In the spirit of one more idea, pandemic pods are popping up all over the place. And those are parents that are just looking for things to do. So if you are creating these little things and you want to market them to pandemic pods, the parents are just grasping for things to throw at their family and say, do it. Okay, that's all. Awesome. That's huge. We grew up in a house where our dad made us do worksheets every summer. So I'm familiar with the, uh, he was podding it before it was cool. And we like actually had other conflicts. You know, I had to play. Couldn't cancel that again. Um, so that's great. No, I appreciate that. That's a wonderful thought too. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Yes. Cool. No, this is all that this is all about. So I'm glad that you're getting value out of this and definitely, definitely lots of great questions and whatnot. Um, just last comment from my end too. I, I definitely cool, do see this as, you know, you can be this connector with um, applicants and recruiters. I don't know if you have relationships with recruiters, but to be able to then just be that sort of one-stop shop and say like, or, or I guess funnel to, um, you know, other employers uh, and just be that connecting force too, so. Yeah, and we've offered really to, to even take, you know, recruiters spend a lot of time rewriting resumes that they don't really have time to do. Um, so if mm -hmm. we take that load off their plate and be a compliment to the recruiter, like, look, I know you got 16 candidates in one place, give us your, t you know, the one resumes that need the most help, we'll take them off and fight and work out a deal like that. So there's no avenue we haven't considered um, but we do need to start being programmatic about the ones we chase with the highest return. All this stuff is certainly going to help educate and inform those decisions, and we're very grateful. Cool. Yeah, and I know that there's a lot that was thrown at you here now, so now the next Everybody thing is prior wanted. prioritizing the, it, right? Like, <laughs> it's a great community, and I certainly will join to look forward to hearing other folks and being able to share feedback with them. So thank you, everybody, for jumping on. We really appreciate everyone's time and thoughtful questions and uh, engagement. It means a lot. Yes. Thanks. And thanks for being here. Um, one last question we'd like to ask uh, before we actually go into breakout rooms too after this so that we can go into smaller, you know, networking spaces or connecting spaces. Uh, but the question is, what can the One Million Cups community do for you? That is an awesome question. And on the last slide, I just, any a, a, a social follow is huge for us, honestly. Um, just any across all the platforms and we'll, we'll drop the links in um, where it's convenient here in the panel or send them to you, Victor. But yeah, that, that's really all we need is like, we're just gonna, you know, cause when you follow it brings up on other, so it's just, we are trying to grow that as much as we can and in, in a way that's organic. As much as I love paying for followers, um, you know, that the data hygiene there's a little weak. So this is the best way to do that for sure. Awesome, yeah, I put the links in the chat for anyone interested to connect. Um, and yeah, so with that, we'll, we'll go into breakout rooms.